for being here. I have um, just a uh, statement to, to make, and then I'll be happy to spend time answering questions that you have. As all of you know, over the past few months, we have had a uh, discussion here in Georgia over how we can best improve our law as it relates to the conduct of public officials and, uh, and more specifically the relationship between members of the Georgia General Assembly and other elected public officials and those who represent the views of businesses, professional groups, and other special interests in the halls of this government. This is an important issue. It is essential that the public trust be maintained and that citizens have confidence in those they elect to govern. When I was first elected Speaker of this House, I made ethics reform a priority, and we moved swiftly and decisively to correct very real problems in this House. I have continued to look at proposals, all proposals, for strengthening our law. And as you know, my position has been that we have a choice between an open and transparent system of full disclosure or a system which totally bans expenditures by registered lobbyists on individual members of the General Assembly and other elected public officials. Last summer, I appointed a bipartisan working group of House members who were charged with looking at real ideas for reform and I want to thank them, many of whom are here today, for their work. And I especially want to thank House Majority Leader Larry O'Neill for his strong leadership on this issue. We have many challenges as a state, and we will confront those challenges <laughs> during this legislative session. It is vital that we as public servants always strive to earn and hold the trust of the public. We do that by enacting true and complete reform of our ethics laws and avoiding gimmicks cloaked as reform by those who seek a platform and relevance. We also earn and hold the public trust, though, by working tirelessly on the issues that matter to Georgians, job creation, quality education for our young people, and safe communities. That is what this House will continue to do. And let me add one final point. I am honored to serve in the Georgia House with good, decent, and honorable men and women. They're serving for the right reasons. Their reputations are something I don't take lightly. And I take offense, and I don't apologize for that, at those who question their integrity and trample on their good names to advance their own agendas. As soon as I answer as many of your questions as I can, I will walk back into the chamber of this House and introduce a package of ethics reform proposals that I believe are historic, reasonable, and real. You're not going to have to wonder what they mean because they're going to be clear. They're going to be understandable, and I think Georgians will understand that this is not a gimmick. The centerpiece of this package is a complete ban on lobbyist spending on individual members of the General Assembly. Other highlights include a complete ban on gifts of tickets to athletic, sporting events, recreational events, musical concerts, and other entertainment events. The only exception will be for those institutions in our system of higher education which invite all members once a year to come to their campus uh, to be their guest uh, for sporting events. The scope of the law is being broadened to include all elected public officials. We are going to continue as we do under current law reimbursement for actual and reasonable travel expenses for members to attend conferences and meetings. I believe those meetings are important because that's one time that we don't see registered lobbyists, but we do see members of associations and 
trade groups of business men and women across Georgia, teachers, other professionals. However, there will be a ex specific exclusion in that reimbursement provision to prohibit the payment of recreational activity expense. Food and beverages, whether it's a cup of coffee, a cold beer, or a steak dinner, may be provided only in events to which all members of the General Assembly have been invited, or all members of the House or Senate, all members of a standing committee or subcommittee, or the entire caucus of either political party in either body. This is not all that we're going to do. We are putting in this package a proposal that we restore rulemaking authority to the Georgia Government Transparency and Campaign Finance Commission. In addition to that, there are provisions which will reduce the workload of this commission by taking out from, uh, by, by lessening the filing requirements for local public officials who are running all over rural Georgia particularly, uncontested, not raising money, not spending money, but their filings are taking up a lot of the time, energy, and resources of the commission. This will free up much of the resources of the commission and allow them to carry out their uh, mission in a better way. We're clarifying and expanding the definition of who is a lobbyist. There are many people who are here in this building almost every day advocating for or against a proposition pending before this legislature that need to be registered and need to be wearing a badge. And we're going to help them do that. In addition to that, because I believe that it's important that we have openness and transparency in Georgia, there will be a separate bill that I'm introducing which will require a, an additional reporting period of campaign contributions. We have allowed ourselves to have in a period right before the legislative session each year sort of a frenzy of fundraising activity and that's fine. But too often, like every other year, the people of Georgia don't know who gives us money in, on the eve of the session beginning. Be, under this bill, and if it's adopted by both houses, there will be an additional report of contributions that are received from January 1 until the convening of the session that must be filed within five days of the convening of the General Assembly. I don't think it's right for the people of Georgia not to know who's giving us money until July when the next disclosure is due.